Hi, Misha here, and been kind of going over some of the aircraft of Sweden, both the Air Force and the Army. And so far we've looked at ones that were used by them, but were designed outside of Sweden. But now, let's look at a wholly Swedish design. The Saab Draken, or Draken. A very unique aircraft, also known as the 35, Model 35, or J35. There's a few variants for a few different names. And uh, it was a very effective fighter in its day, and was a pretty good export for Sweden as well. So let's look at this model and a couple of variants. Why not? And I have three models for you here. All are 172 scale die cast and all are from Aviation 72. On the left we have a Swedish Air Force Draken J-35. This is the interceptor fighter version. In the middle, we have the Danish Air Force's F-35, as they called it. The uh, Saab designation was A-35XD. This is the fighter bomber or ground attack version. And then finally, we have the version used by the Finnish Air Force, which they just called the J-35, and that Saab called the 35XS. And this was uh, more of a fighter like the Swedish as well. And so, yeah, we'll get into it. So, the Saab... 35 Draken or Draken Dragon or Kite A remarkable aircraft even today but quite ahead of its time and it really dated back to 1949 As I said in the previous video the De Havilland Vampire was really effectively Sweden's first operational jet as the J-28. This would give way to their domestic design, the J-29 Tunnen, which was a very early swept-wing fighter and interceptor. But in 1949, the Swedish Air Force, the Swedish government, release specs that were very ambitious for a very high-performance interceptor. At this time, it needed to be able to fly up and potentially chase off or shoot down transonic bombers, so bombers that are going just under Mach 1. So it needed to have a very good climb rate. It itself needed to be able to go past Mach 1. Initially, they projected at least 1.4 and it would need to carry ordnance that could take out a bomber. At this time, you're looking more at unguided rockets and heavy cannon. But on top of that, it also had to be able to use pretty crude, unfinished airstrips, including motorways that were part of Sweden's national defense, and uh, it needed to be able to have relatively short takeoff and landing. And if that's not complicated enough already, it needed to be able to be refueled and rearmed in 10 minutes by essentially half a dozen conscript soldiers. And, you know, just generally speaking, maintained by conscript soldiers. In other words, high performance, but also not too complicated. Uh, Saab took on the challenge. Originally, the government called it the Project 1200, 
they would start working on what they would call internally the project 1250 and they would begin by laying out the radar because the the government wanted this to be all weather so it needed a radar it also needed to be single seat so they laid out the cockpit they let out the jet engine and they tried to figure out how to make a wing that could do everything that needed to be done. They decided to go with a Delta wing, but then this presented some problems, not the least of which was weight. And that's what kind of led to this very unique double, double Delta wing. With the thick inner wing and the thin outer wing, this giving both high speed and low speed performance and of course they have a tail they did experiment with a true horizontal tail but actually this proved less effective but this was just a radical concept therefore in 1950 in may they began construction of the model 210 known as the little dragon and this was a 70% or nearly three quarters scale proof of concept for this double wing design. And it used a pretty underpowered jet engine, but it was enough to, you know, see if it would work. And about a year and a half later, towards the end of 1951, the first prototype was ready. And it would take to the skies on January 21st, 1952. And while the engine was intentionally underpowered, it proved that the wing would work. Nevertheless, some of the military were still kind of doubtful. But, in 1953, the design was finalized, the program was pretty much frozen, and three prototypes and three pre-production test models were ordered. And so they would get to work building the first full-size Saab Model 35, and uh, it would take to the skies for the first time in October of 1955, the first prototype. The second prototype with a more powerful engine would fly in 1956, breaking Mach 1, and by September of that year, the third prototype was flying, and on and on. And with these successes, the 35A was adopted as the Jacked 35J35 Interceptor, and the production order was issued. And the first true production model was ready in 1958, and the uh, earliest deliveries to the Swedish Air Force would take place at the end of 1959. And it would be officially adopted, accepted into service with F-13 on March 8, 1960. Now this was the original A. It did have an afterburning engine. And uh, it uh, was capable of about Mach 1.8. Back in 1956, the speed requirements were kind of up to at least 1.7 it would have three basic card points it could carry two licensed copies of the aim nine sidewinder one under each wing it had a center line hard point that could either be a drop tank or a double pylon to carry two more sidewinders so up to four missiles but really its primary armament was still two 30 millimeter cannon with about 90 rounds each. But even as the first squadrons were training with this, the 35B was coming online. It dated back to 1956. It had a more powerful engine. Honestly, the 35B was pretty ambitious. They were going to go, by the way, the 35A used a, a French radar set at least components of it like in the mirage well the b was to have a swedish radar set and a more powerful one and it was to have a more powerful engine better avionics 
but it didn't really work out that way. Everything wasn't ready. So when the 35B hit the scene in 1961, it was a little bit faster, about Mach 1.9. And uh, it could carry a couple of 75 millimeter unguided rocket pods for head-on attack. It also had an improved ejection seat and things. But it never quite lived up, so there was room for improvement. Now next we have the SK-35C. The SK for school, meaning trainer. And a trainer was ordered early on, at least the front end section was ordered on. Ordered. And so it dated all the way back. And essentially, the 35C were 25 of the 35A models that were converted to be two-seaters and did not have armament or radar. And these would actually enter into service quite early on and serve up through 1985 training pilots. But then we get to the 35D, the J-35D. This is really where the Draken reaches its potential. It has an upgraded engine. In fact, it's the Avid engine, the same one used in the English Electric Lightning, the Model 300. The D can achieve Mach 2. It can also carry more stores. Early versions could only carry about 3,700 pounds in payload. With the D, this is up to about 4,800. It can carry two fuel tanks under the fuselage. And it still has the two cannon. And this is really the last of the true interceptor types. They would go into service around... 1964-1965 and it would lead directly to the final version for the Swedish Air Force the J-35F and this version while it still was very much an interceptor had more fighter dogfighting and even a little bit of fighter bomber capability they would wire the wings to fire a Swedish version of the Falcon missile from America, but it was a much improved Falcon. In fact, there are two different types they would use. It had more fuel. It had a further uprated engine. Sorry. One thing they did would do with the Ds, they would continue on to the F models. They would extend the... Uh, intakes out a bit. They would also go to a bulge canopy with the F. They would further improve things like the ejection seat, the autopilot, other bits of the avionics. And by this time it can carry over 6,000 pounds in stores including additional fuel. These aircraft can climb past 65,000 feet. Overall they're about 50 feet long, with a wingspan of just shy of 31 feet. Even though it wasn't designed as a dogfighter, the Draken turned out to be more maneuverable, more agile. Than Denmark would operate perhaps the most radical variant of the Draken. This is their F-35 which is a ground attack or fighter bomber version. But this wasn't actually the first attempt Saab had at this. Back in 1960, Switzerland, who also operated the de Havilland Vampire, just like Sweden, thought about purchasing the Draken and needed fighter bomber capability. So Saab came up with the 35H, 
Now, as it happens, Switzerland would adopt the Mirage. But the 35H did quite well in testing. Well, fast forward to 1966, and Denmark is looking to replace its aging fleet of F-100 Super Sabres from North American, which it's using as fighter bombers, and also its RF-84s, which it's using as photo reconnaissance. And it looks at quite a few aircraft from all the major manufacturers, including Saab's, but actually the 35 here was at the very low end of the list. There were many aircraft they liked better, but wanting the contract, Saab, who had originally offered the 35X, X for export, essentially asked the Danish Air Force what they needed, listened, and came out with a new version known as the 35 XD. And this, yes, had more fighter bomber ground attack capabilities. In fact, this was the heaviest, most capable version in that sense. It could carry up to 10,000 pounds in stores. It had eight hard points. Whereas the J35J had the, uh, the two, I guess you call them the under intake or chin hard points. It was actually this version here that first introduced those additional hard points. It also had two on each wing, plus two under the fuselage, so a total of eight. One thing I didn't mention earlier, the 35D and 35F could carry up to four fuel tanks, two under each wing, plus two in the center. So if there were four hard points that were plumbed, that would continue with the XD version, as well as more internal fuel. They would actually restore the two 30mm cannon, whereas the F only had one. But the Danish Air Force did not need the radar, so it would not have that. To work with the extra weight, the wings were reworked and reinforced. The frame was made stronger. The landing gear were reinforced. All kinds of little changes like that. But otherwise, it was very much a Saab 35F. And in 1968, the Danish Air Force placed an order. Now, they would buy three versions. What Saab called the A 35 XD for attack, they would call simply the 35 F. Excuse me, the F 35. <laughs> then they also needed a two seat trainer. Saab so would, uh, you know, this is the same as the SK 35 XD. They would call this the TF 35. And finally, they would need a reconnaissance version. Saab so called this the S. 35 XD and the Danes would call this the RF 35. Now interestingly whereas the Swedish reconnaissance version was not armed the Danish version was. It still had the two cannon instead of seven cameras it could hold only five and it could still mount underwing munitions for defense, so it had a secondary role where it could be used as a fighter. Likewise, their two-seat trainer, while well, that's primarily what it's for, retained one cannon, and it too could carry underwing stores. They would originally order 20 of the F-35, 20 of the RF-35, and six of the TF-35, and the first delivery was for three planes on September 1st, 1970. And then in 1973, they would buy five more surplus 35s from the Swedish Air Force, and they wouldn't plan to fly these, they were just hulks for spare parts. 
And with that, they would uh, they would start using these and replacing their older aircraft. They would do a major update in the early 1980s, giving them newer avionics. They would give them a laser range finder and even designator. They would give them radar warning. Electronic countermeasures were being improved. So on and so forth. Now, I've kind of customized this model. <laughs> I had a couple of leftover bullpup missiles. And these aircraft actually carried them. They actually could carry just about any standard NATO stores. Iron bombs, rocket pods. But they could carry the guided missile bullpup here. So, I used empty pylons and glued them on and put them in there. And there we go. And, of course, it still has the two uh, sidewinders for air defense. And we can either say the pods in the center are rocket pods or fuel pods. Either way makes sense. So they would uh, rebuild theirs with the last one coming out of the factory in 1986. And much like in Sweden... They plan to keep these in service for quite a while, but post-Cold War cutbacks meant that by 1991, they only had one active fighter squadron using these and one active reconnaissance squadron. And then in 1993, these would uh, finally retire their Drakens. However, two are still, as far as I know, even now, in Denmark, even though they're not flying, they're kept ready just in case. On top of that, in the 1990s, six were sold to the USA. The uh, National Pilot Training School bought six. They bought two two-seaters and four reconnaissance single-seaters. And at least three of these are still flying today. So the U.S. actually ended up with some of the Danish... <laughs> Danish Dragons. And again, they would have a total of 51. They would actually have one more order for, uh, for trainers in the 70s. So they would have 51 aircraft they would fly, plus they would have five hulks to strip for parts. Just for whatever that's worth. But yeah, they really kind of pushed it in a different direction. Kind of totally different from the original concept of a high-performance interceptor. Making it into a very capable fighter-bomber. You can see on this model that has some different antennae on the tail. There's also some under the nose, because it's not a radar nose. It has different equipment in the nose there. And again, I fitted it with two bull bubbles because, I don't know, seemed fun to me. <laughs> with that, let's move on to our third and final draken today. And this is actually the first draken I got quite a long time ago. This is from the Finnish Air Force. Just a short time after Denmark was shopping, another close neighbor of Sweden's was needing to update its own air force. It um, had been flying a mix of all kinds of things. It also had the fighter version of the English, the British, NAT, the F-1. But anyway, and it flew some Soviet MiGs. MiG-21s too. Anyway, it needed a new interceptor with a secondary fighter-bomber role, but it, unlike Denmark, it wasn't really that focused on the ground attack. It just needed that as an option, just in case. And it liked what it saw with the, with the Saab. So, in 1970, it placed an order for 12. And these were, again, customized to meet Finnish needs. 
They started with the basic 35F, made a few changes to the avionics and radar and countermeasures, designating this version as the 35XS, X again for export, S for Suomi, and in Finland they simply called it the J-35. Now, these 12 aircraft were not going to be built by Saab in Sweden, not entirely. They would assemble kits, ship them over to Finland, and Valmet would actually assemble them. But this would take some time. So in the interim, 1972, Finland would lease six surplus J-35Bs, at this time, they're, they're being retired out of the Swedish Air Force. So they would lease six 35Bs, mostly for practice and training and familiarity. In fact, they really stripped out most of the combat equipment from these. And uh, in 1974, they would ask for a seventh one because they had a little bit of an accident. The aircraft wasn't destroyed, but it was damaged enough that it was grounded. So to still have half a dozen, they would lease a seventh 35B. And then the next year, 1975, the uh, 35XSs would be assembled by Valmet and enter into service. And then after that, the Finnish Air Force would negotiate to just purchase the total of seven 35Bs. They seem to be rather pleased with the aircraft. And on top of that, they would acquire about half a dozen Swedish Air Force surplus 35F models. These would be slightly changed to be FSs for Xiaomi again. And they would get three of the uh, SK-35Cs. Designating these, as you would expect, as 35CS. So they would have a trainer. Now one thing worth pointing out, I talked about Denmark. The, um, the two seaters that Denmark got in their last order placed in 1973 and that were delivered between 76 and 77 really were the last all-new production Drakens to come out of the Saab factory. And even these were assembled using existing frames, tools, components, because by this time, the mid-70s, they had pretty much switched over to vegan production. They were still very much maintaining and uh, supporting the Draken, but they were not planning on making new ones. So the ones that Finland, they're picking up, these are surplus ones that have been reconditioned. Finally, in 1984, they get the last batch. They buy 18 Swedish Air Force surplus 35Fs and two more Swedish Air Force two-seaters because this is the time that the Swedish Air Force is finally retiring the Cs in 1984-85. And this is also when the Fs are being drawn down, the ones that weren't selected for conversion to J-35Js were being retired. So it was a good time to buy them at a bargain price. And that's one thing. The, the Draken was actually quite economical for these countries to operate, but still gave them a very potent jet. Now this model here from Finland, again, aside from some avionics and whatnot, it's uh, pretty much a 35F. Now as far as I know, the Finnish versions never had the pylons here under the engines. Let me know if I'm wrong. So they just had the wings for missiles and then the underbelly for tanks or additional missiles. I looked a lot to see if they ever added those additional pylons and I don't believe so but if I'm wrong please let me know.
it took me long enough to find out that the Danish 35Fs actually had them, which they did. To that end, uh, beginning in oh, the 1990s, Finland would update their own aircraft, pretty much doing what everyone else was doing with the Dragons. They were adding new avionics, uh, modern countermeasures, um, you know, modern electronics in general. It is worth pointing out that the Finnish version did have a radar, unlike the uh, Danish. And they were uh, they were flying them. Although by 1995, a lot of the older 35Bs and even this, many of the Cs were out of service, so they were pretty much just flying some Fs. And then in 2000, they decided to replace these with the FA-18 Hornet. And so the Finnish Air Force flew for the last time their Draken on August 16, 2000 thus kind of ending the uh, eh, pretty ma you know pretty major export user they they flew 48 of these so not an insignificant country considering how relatively small the Finnish Air Force is and then um, they really liked them they, these countries seem to really like them they handle well pilots like them they were a little more challenging to fly so pilots feel accomplished when they uh, you know, were able to do it, but they weren't so challenging that they were dangerous. In fact, um, accidents were pretty low considering the generation of jet that this was. But we do have one final user to talk about. And that, of course, would be Austria. Now, I don't have a model from Austria. Aviation 72 does make a couple. One is kind of in a, um, you know air show livery the other one's more in a military but uh yeah three three's enough for me and i actually bought these over a few years time period at that but austria was really the last user they had actually been flying Saab's j29 tonnen in the 1960s and then finally they just they had to retire them in 1972 and this left them without a dedicated interceptor and they did absolutely nothing about this for over 13 years Austria's political position was a little unusual at this time they were under a lot of restrictions because of the events of World War II and so this wasn't such a big deal but finally after kind of Detente in the 1970s, as tensions started to kind of rise up in Europe again a bit in the 1980s, they decided it was time to to get a new fighter. But at this time, they, could, they couldn't have guided missiles on their fighters, so they needed something with cannon. Well, that doesn't really give a lot of options. By this time, a lot of planes don't have cannon, or they maybe have one. So looking around in 1984, by 1985, they select the Draken. And these are long out of production now, almost a decade out of production. So what Saab does, they buy back 24 surplus J-35Ds from the Swedish Air Force, and they refurbish them. They basically give them a life extension, airframe extension, a thousand hours extension. They also go to the new canopy, which I guess I didn't talk about. The early ones had kind of a framed canopy, the 35 A's, B's, C's. But by the time of the F, they went to this more bulge canopy, which first appeared in the 35E, I believe. Not only did it give better visibility, it also was bird strike proof, so less likely to shatter which is a good thing. So they did give the newer canopy to the 35Ds that were going to Austria. They also reworked their guns for better reliability, and as usual, the radar and avionics. And this was designated as the Saab 35O, O for Austria. So 24 were delivered, the first one in 1987, and then in 1988 and 1989, to 
fighter squadrons would train and begin flying these. They also purchased some reconnaissance pods. They didn't want to go with the full, you know, 35E dedicated reconnaissance, but they wanted to be able to attach pods to the belly if needed for that purpose. And that's what they did. These were these were armed with the uh, two 30 millimeter cannon, and that's pretty much what they used for self defense. At least up until 1993, as Yugoslavia fell apart and went into civil war, their aircraft began violating Austrian airspace and kind of became concerning. Also, this was after the disillusionment of the Soviet Union, so that was kind of no longer a concern. So the Austrian Air Force was given the go-ahead to purchase some of the AIM-9s, or rather Swedish-licensed AIM-9s from uh, Valmet, actually, in Finland. And so they would, or Valmet would do the work to put them under the planes, at least. It's a little murky. Some people say the, uh, the Sidewinders came from the USA, some say from Sweden, some say from Finland. It seems one thing that the work was done in Finland to fit them to the aircraft. And um, so these were redelivered, and they were hoping to retire by 1998. But unlike the rest of these we talked about today, they retired early because of budget cuts. They actually had to keep flying their Drakens because they couldn't find a suitable replacement that met their needs and finances. Now, one problem. They had a contract with Saab. They did not buy any two-seat trainers in Austria. Rather, even though the 35C was out of Swedish Air Force service, they kept five flying in Sweden to help train Austrian pilots. So when Austria got new pilots, they would just send up to Sweden for training and then come back, and that's what, that allowed them not to operate two different types. But by 1997, this agreement was ending, and so Saab would no longer be flying these old, at this point, very old two-seat trainers that, remember, dated back to the 1960s. And so they had to deal with that. On top of that, the maintenance agreement for spare parts and all that would expire by 2005. So they kind of had to figure out something. They really wanted the Eurofighter, but, well, we know that it was going through a lot of uh, problems. So what Austria ultimately did, beginning in 2004, they purchased a dozen F-5s from Switzerland, just as a stopgap measure. And then finally they began receiving Eurofighters a couple of years later. But that said, this finally allowed them to retire the Draken with its final flight on November 25th, 2005. And this is kind of an interesting date because the very first test flight of the first prototype, a full-size prototype, I should say, was on October 25th, 1955. So by this reckoning, the aircraft was allowed to be in service for literally half a century, 50 years, and one month. Not at all a bad record. But when it was over... That was the end of the J-35's military service. Although a few are still airworthy in the world today and are flown for research purposes or just by civilians who have deep pockets. In total, Saab would build 651 of these. And obviously the majority, over 500, would go to the Swedish Air Force. And it would serve as distinction, even though they were partially replaced by the Viggen, a more advanced aircraft. It really wasn't until the Gripen came along that the Drake Draken was finally phased out completely. So yeah. <laughs> These models are pretty neat. And this one just came in today. That's why I decided to do this video. The Aviation 72s, they don't have gear up or down, although they do have moving wheels. 
Some come with fixed ordinates, some come with optional ordinates. Kind of just depends on the scheme. And sometimes they have kind of rather overly bold panel lines. And the engine detailing isn't perfect. But, again, they're very heavy-duty metal. They do have pilot figures. They do come with the stand, even though I don't typically use it. And they're priced reasonable. A very heavy aircraft. And they do aircraft that no one else really does. There's a lot of neat planes in the Aviation 72 line. Most of them are European. But, um, yeah. But their newer planes, like the Gripen and the Draken, they do very well. And it gives us an option for those of us who kind of like cool double delta wing jets. There's just really nothing else like this. I wish they would do maybe like the French Mirage. That'd be neat. But no one's really done the Mirage series since uh, Falcon. Uh, Hobbymaster does the Mirage 2000. It's not quite the same though. But yeah, this is a jet I really like. And I actually put a lot of effort into researching it. So hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please post them. And as always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. This is Misha. I'll catch you very soon next time. Then anticipated. In a lot of ways, it was very successful. A crew could easily refuel it and work on it. The Avon engine, although much like in Britain, the early ones maybe had a few issues. But at this point, the engine, <clears throat> which was, by the way, made under license in Sweden, as were the uh, missiles. It still uses the Sidewinder, the AIM-9, but it also can do the Falcons. Interestingly, the fuel tanks under the fuselage look pretty much the same as Sweden's rocket pods because the rocket pods had front ends that could be blown out if fired. So it's quite a hard to tell the difference in their rocket pods and their fuel pods. But um, at this point it's a very capable aircraft. The D's would actually give way to the F's quite early. The D's were out of service by 1969, 1970. But they would continue to take deliveries of the 35F up through 1972. As for the E in between them, it was an unarmed photo reconnaissance version of the D with seven, uh, seven cameras. And uh, it would see service for quite a long time. He would get upgrades to his photographic equipment and uh, countermeasures in the 70s and be retired by 1980, though. So really just a uh, very good aircraft. So much so that even by the 1970s, when it's starting to look a little old compared to newer aircraft like the Viggen and Western aircraft like the F-15 and F-16. They still had quite a few of the uh, F-30, excuse me, the 35F models. They didn't have a lot of, um, you know, air hours. And uh, Saab originally kind of suggested a pretty, pretty big upgrade program. But in the end, in 1985, the government, the Air Force, approved a little bit more of a scaled back they would have 54 35Fs updated with, again, new avionics. A little bit of engine work, computer work, countermeasures work. And they would have two new pylons under the uh, engine exhaust or the engine intakes here. Meaning that they could... Uh, Carry a little bit more, a little more versatility. And beginning in 1987, 
running through 1991. These 35Fs would be sent into the factory to be rebuilt, rebuilt into what were known as J35Js, and they were to be assigned to F10, Fighter Group 10. Also in 1987, they decided to go ahead and convert 12 more, bringing the total up to 66. And then in 1989, the 35F was taken out of service when there was an F-35J to take care of it. And originally, it was thought that these would uh, remain until at least, you know, 2001, 2002. But thanks to post-Cold War budget cuts, retirement came a little early. By 1997, only about 22 were being used. And then on December 8, 1998, the last flight of the Draken and Swedish Air Force Service would take place. And then the next year, 1999, it would be officially and formally retired. Now this model here is uh, 35F updated to 35J. But it's in the original raw metal scheme that the Swedish Air Force used in the 1950s, excuse me, 60s and 70s. Later versions would often have a uh, camo pattern, that four color camo that the Viggen has kind of made popular. But I thought this was kind of neat to have the metal done this way. These are pretty heavy. It came with the ordnance already installed. It had the two sidewinders <clears throat> and the pods, but it actually had empty pylons on the wings. And just for fun, I put uh, put Falcon, or the Swedish version of the Falcon, upgraded Falcon, on there. Just to give it a little more interesting goings on so this is definitely outfitted in kind of a air to air role while of course sweden expected to use these against the soviets if war ever were declared they were very much in favor of their neutrality so they had you know plans contingencies to use these against western aircraft too but of course, in the end, they never had to fire in anger. One thing to note about Swedish jets like this, because of their mission profile, they did not have the capability of aerial refueling. That just wasn't something that was needed for them. And um, to kind of help with the short runway for landing they uh, they had a parachute a drag chute in the back and they could land in under 700 meters so not terribly short but also for a, a Mach 2 aircraft not bad at all they have kind of an interesting wheel arrangement there's a couple of small little wheels under the exhaust keep it from dragging then we have the usual tricycle arrangement but that was the Draken in uh, Sweden but there were three major export customers <clears throat> 